Oh my gosh, I am completely obsessed with fiber right now. Absolutely obsessed with it. So that's why I wanted to invite my go-to nutrition expert to come onto the show to talk about why do longevity experts now call it the secret weapon to aging better and living longer? I really want to know this. So Heidi Skolnick, who is a sports nutritionist at HSS, that's the Hospital for Special Surgery in New York City, and she is also the co-author of the wildly successful New York Times bestselling book, um, The Whole Body Reset, and that book, Heidi, you'll be coming on in a second, that book made me obsessed with protein and when I eat protein and am I getting enough protein. So I'm, I get obsessed about these things. So Heidi, welcome back to Growth Talk. This is like your third, fourth time, fifth time. Being here. You're always here. <laughs> I, thank you. Thank you for the Oh, it's so good to have you. And I I'm, I'm really am obsessed with fiber and I'm eating probably way too many beans, but maybe not. Maybe I need to eat more. We'll get to that. So let's talk about this. Um, mm -hmm. There are so many studies out now that are showing, and, and I'm also hearing it a lot from the Dan Buettner Blue Zones books, and now the documentary that's running on Netflix, about people who eat, who have diets that are high in fiber, they, you know, don't die prematurely, they can maybe sidestep some of those chronic diseases, like, you know, cardiovascular disease and stroke and certain cancers, compared to people who have less fiber in their diets. And I, I really want to talk about that. And that's going to be our focus today. So let's get started. Heidi, what is fiber? And why is it so important? So fiber is just the name given to carbohydrates that are not digestible. And then it's divided into soluble and insoluble, and both are important. Um, they do a lot of different things. They help us with satiety. They help with regularity, right? Preventing constipation and providing enough to go regularly. Um, so bulk and water. Um, they can help to, that's the big, that's the big news flash. They can help lower our cholesterol or keep our cholesterol levels in check and decrease the LDL levels. And that's where it kind of ties in to, um, to, to, to lowering cardiovascular risk. And mm -hmm. then of course it's found in nutrient rich foods. So when you're eating fiber rich foods, for the most part, you're also getting lots of other nutrients. Right. So how does it play a role in the microbiome, which is, you know, gut, like we want a more diverse gut microbiome. Exactly. How does like fiber do that just yeah. by keeping things moving along as you put it uh, before? No, actually, it's more than that, which is really because, you know, for the past, I would say like five to 10 years, first of all, this whole, the whole, we're just learning more and more each day. So whatever I say today, fast, fast forward, you know, a year or two years or three years from now, and there's going to be so much more we know. So true. Yeah. So true. So for the longest time, I think we were hearing about probiotics, right? And that was exciting to understand that, like, if you eat yogurt, there's this fermented, you know, the, all of these um, cultures that we're introducing into our gut that helps keep our gut healthy. But it doesn't end with the probiotics. And in fact, it isn't just about that. And that's where this diversity that you're talking about comes in, because there are prebiotics. And the prebiotics feed the probiotics. And the more diverse your gut is with all of these microflora, um, and the more different types of fibers you're getting in through food, the healthier your gut will be. And so that's what the key is. It, so it really, fiber also helps to, I'm just reading some notes here, stabilize blood sugar levels and even potentially prevent type 2 diabetes. Is this, is this true? You know, it's, um, yes, only in that fiber helps to sort of, um, you know, slow down that the, the amount of, like if you have a pure sugar and how that elevates insulin levels, when you have something that's fiber rich, your body first has to break down and get through that fiber. Um, and then, you know, and then how does it prevent diabetes? Is it that you're eating more nutritionally rich foods? Is it that your weight is better managed? Is You know, it's kind of hard to tease through all of that. Mm -hmm. But And then is it helping your microbiome and that 
you know, we're learning more and more about all of the diseases that are helped through a healthy microbiome from even, you know, I know one of your passions and how we met was through the bone health world. And so is it actually starts in your gut? Does osteoporosis and bone health start in how in your gut and how you absorb calcium, let's say, and, and, um, you know, I don't want to get into the weeds here because this is like a little bit more short and sweet, but you know, it might have to do with short chain fatty acids and butyrate, like all these different elements that are created as byproducts of this fermentation and the role it plays. You know, there was a recent study, and maybe this is the one you're, you're referring to that was looking at a, it, this was a prospective study um, and a sample of the U.S. adult population with 86,642 participants. So we're talking large. That's large. It, that's large. And it found that the, to the dietary total fiber intake was statistically significantly inverse associated with all-cause death. Incredible. That's cardiovascular. That's cancer. You know, and, and they found that both for soluble and insoluble and that it, played a role in all-cause disease. So that's pretty convincing, pretty huge. It's trying to understand how it does all that. And, um, and I guess then we can extrapolate from that that it really does decrease your risk for so many chronic, kind of common chronic diseases in this country and thus adding to people's health span, sure, and also extending their, their lifespan, which is why I guess they're calling it this, this you know, the secret weapon well, for longevity. I, is that is that true? I mean, what happens is, you know, we, we talk about this, your lifespan, your health span, or your chronological age versus your biological age. Right. <laughs> and with chronological age, if you're not paying attention, exercise is a piece of that, you know, your gut health, di um, d uh, dis biosis, like you're a gut imbalance and less diversity. So your biological age, however, is related better to having more gut, um, all of this diversity and inflammation, this chronic inflammation that happens as we age, muscle loss, you know, all of these things work together. And so with healthy aging, you have more diverse gut, you have less inflammation, you have, um, better muscle, you have a better immune system, and it seems to impact, you know, all of these different disease states and, and mood, you know, depression, uh, its role in obesity, its role in, in all of these different chronic diseases that we think about almost as being inevitable with age. Right. And, and we shouldn't think that way at all, as we as we now know. Right. Okay, so let's now that we've heard from you, Heidi, the expert on, you know, why do we need why is it important? Why do we need it? What does it do to our bodies? And what happens to our bodies if we don't have enough of it? Now let's get into the specifics. What is the ideal amount of fiber that we should be getting every day? What is that? Um, so <laughs> Basically, the idea is that um, for every, four, let's see, how does this, for every thousand calories, there's 14 grams of fiber. That's a general rule. Adults less than 50, that equals then approximately 25 grams of fiber for women, 38 grams for men. Adults 50 and older, women might be more like 21 grams, men 30 doesn't have to be, depends how active you are and how much you're eating. And that reduction has to do also with, because it can make you feel full, we wanna be sure you're, you know, are you taking less calories and also making sure you get in enough, you know, you're not so full that you're not taking in other nutrient rich foods. Mm -hmm. So that's the goal, but to understand that a food source um, having two or more grams of fiber is kind of considered a good source of fiber. So if you think about getting two or three good sources of fiber, at each meal, that's two, four, six, six, 12, 18, summit snacks. You know, that's how you kind of can imagine getting there by choosing actually a few good sources at each meal. And of course, some have more than two, some can have five or, you know, beans or really, a, you know, pack them in there. Yeah, yeah, so, I'm obsessed, you know, as you can hear, I get obsessed with things. I'm obsessed with cannellini beans at the moment. Okay. <laughs> but it's all, it's red beans, black beans, it's lentils. Sure. So it's mm -hmm. all sorts of beans, but you know, you can have quinoa or you can have fruits, you can have vegetables. It's all in plant-based foods, nuts and seeds. Certainly some have more than others. Um, 
But, and these prebiotics, again, I don't really think we need to mince and like make sure you're only having these, but there is a list of sort of prebiotic foods and that would include things like apples and artichokes and asparagus and banana and barley and berries, dandelion greens, flaxseed, garlic, um, beans and peas, green vegetables, oats, onions, tomatoes, soybeans, wheat. You know, so there's there's lots. It's and again, I want to give credit where credit is due, down people from around the world. And he has made a case that all of these people who live to 100 and beyond, they all eat beans and lots and lots of fiber every yeah. single day. It's just like a part of their lives. They don't think about it. They just do it. Right. So right. let There's me ask you. Things. There's genetics. Yeah. There's the environment. There's the walking and the activity. Remember, it's not just one vertical. It's a little. Now, Heidi, okay, as we get older, now we, we kind of got like that baseline of what you should be getting. As you get older, I know from that gut microbiome expert that we want more diverse diversity happening in our right. gut microbiome. And we also know that with aging, natural aging, it becomes less diverse. So therefore we have right. to work a little harder to make it more diverse, right? Okay, we got that. Do we need more fiber as we get older? I don't believe the issue is more. I think the issue is, is diversity. So like I eat berries probably every single day. Me too. Yep. Yeah, but actually, instead of having just strawberries, it's better to have strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, right? Raspberries. And, you know, instead of having one type of lettuce to have a mixed lettuce thing, instead of having one, like just almonds have mixed, because it's the variety more than the quantity that is really important. Good I, point. So you're saying then to get the diversity in your system inside, you really want to have a more diverse yeah, group all, of things. Right. And that that's actually what's really important. Okay. So you've already mentioned a lot of the sources. Um, is Are there any that you wanted to add to that? Like any... I wanted to just tell you like an example. I use this actually in one of the talks that I give. Like here's an example of a meal when you think like, oh, how can I do that? So here's like a very typical, easy, accessible, no matter where you are in the country kind of sandwich, like lunch. A turkey sandwich on white bread with a little bit of mayo, small bag of pretzels, right? That seems like a pretty good, not a high fat meal. I'm not going to get, right? Like a pretty good, like here, right? Got a little and protein in there too. <laughs> in there, right. That's 2.6 grams of fiber. Now take that sandwich and put it on whole grain bread. And it goes from 1.6 grams of fiber to 3 grams of fiber. Now instead of the mayo, zero grams of fiber, put a quarter of an avocado on. That's 2.3 grams of fiber. Now, instead of that bag of pretzels, have an apple. That's 2.8 grams of fiber. That meal went from 2.6 grams of fiber to 8.1 grams of fiber. So again, instead of going, you know, two, four, six, that's like, like most people get 11 grams or less per day. Now that meal is eight grams of fiber, eight, 16, 24. So a few changes equal a big difference. Yeah. Magnified over time. Absolutely. And you know what I've been doing? I did mention my obsession with cannellini beans. So I've been just like sauteing up a whole bunch of mixed vegetables, just whatever I, I get oh. in the store, all different colors. And then um, and then I add a, a can of cannellini beans to that. And very often we'll have that with oh. rice, you know, or add some chicken or salmon. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. you've got a lot of fiber and protein yeah. happening in that meal. And you then could, for breakfast, right? Uh, oatmeal? Sure, you can do oatmeal, but you mm -hmm. got to get protein in too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can do oatmeal, but you can do berries. You know, you can do whole grain bread. You, I mean, there are there are a lot of options, right? You, um, and and back to beans, like you can certainly add beans, like you're saying. You could do like a you know a, a bean soup. You could do a lentil salad. You like there's lots of different ways that you can add. You can have a a plant based meal, or it could be plant based but not plant only, like a chili. It could be chili just a bean chili or chili that does have meat, but you're extending it with using the beans um, and still getting in. So there's lots of different ways to begin to do that. Yep. And, and pretty easy too. And I think fairly accessible, right? Like this is not too complicated. Yeah. Question for you. Uh, uh, and someone actually asked me this the other day uh, when I mentioned that I was going to be doing an episode focusing on fiber. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we can get supplements for everything these days. 
best to, I'm assuming I already know your answer, best to get it from food rather than taking a fiber supplement, like some kind of fiber supplement, right? Right. So fiber supplements, like again, we won't get into sort of medical reasons that you may not want to strain or, you know, like there, there's sometimes reason for that. But in general, you know, there are two types of supplement that out there. I mean, there's more, but there's, you know, that usually are like psyllium or uh, bran. And so that you're not going to get the diversity, right? From right. In that supplement. So, and you're not certainly going to get all the nutrients that also accompany, you know, when you get, when you take an orange that has fiber, but you're getting also vitamin C and hesperidin and like all the different nutrients in that orange. Yeah. Same thing for all of these, you know, all of the phytonutrients that are found in all of these plant-based foods. You're not going to get that in the supplement. Um, so, of course, I encourage food first. Uh, Across the board. Yeah, definitely, yes. The only, I think, um, caveat to that is probably vitamin D. You know, I know we're going outside of our little lane right now, but vitamin <laughs> D, it's very hard to get in food. and yeah. There are definitely times when supplements are indicated, and that would even be true for fiber. There yeah. are reasons you might need to take a fiber supplement. There right. are times in life where in medications you might be taking that are binding and taking a supplement with fiber supplement might help or prune juice. But in general, you know, to, to answer your question, if you're talking about taking it as a way to improve your gut, the diversity of your gut, that's not going to happen with a fiber supplement. It might help your regularity. Right. But it's not going to help that diversity that we really, right. really want. By the way, you mentioned prune juice. And yeah. I don't want to leave this conversation without giving a little credit to prunes. Um, yeah. And prunes, as we know, they studies show, and I don't even think they really understand why this happens. But apparently prunes help fight inflammation or inflammaging, as, as you put it before, um, which, you know, we want to do everything we can to keep inflammation out of our bodies. Yeah. Um, so I, I just think as, I that. take four prunes a day and that is that adds to my fiber yeah. level as well. So yeah. that's like a little habit I've picked up along the way in this past year. So Heidi, OK, t before we kind of say our goodbyes, wrap up. Give us, please, three key takeaways that you really want to make sure the Groff Talk audience remembers from our conversation today. Um, hmm, three keys as it relates to fiber, which is just, you know, you have three meals. So each head, <laughs> yeah. try to aim for, um, no. so it would be, yes, aim for more fiber by really picking, trying to be specific with two or three good sources at each meal. Diversity. So try to expand your food choices. I think it's easy not to because even, you know, because we all kind of eat the same 15 foods. So try to begin <laughs> to expand that a little bit. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And what would be my third as it relates to fiber? Eat prunes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, Heidi, thank you so much. And, you know, and I know that you jumped on this uh, on a, during a very, very busy day. I so appreciate it because, you know, when I become obsessed about something, I have to get to the bottom of it. So, so thank you again. And I know that you'll be back soon. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye.